In this video, I'll show you how we're going to be painting our carved pinch pot. So here I have my carved pinch pot that I did in a previous video. And at this point, it has been bisque fired. So this is at the bisque square stage and it's ready to be finished. So when our projects get to bisque square, we have a lot of options as to how we can decorate them. For this particular one, we want to emphasize the texture where we carved into the surface of our pinch pot. We want that to stand out. So we're not going to be glazing these. We're going to be doing a technique called dry brush painting. And what dry brush painting is going to allow, it's going to allow our texture to stand out against the background. In order to get our texture to stand out, there's a couple of different things we're gonna do. The first step is going to be to paint using acrylic paint our entire pinch pot, except for the foot for right now. So we're gonna paint the whole outside, we're gonna paint the rim, we're gonna paint the whole inside. And as we do this, the bisque square is very porous so again, that means it's gonna absorb any sort of liquid that we put on it. So the paint is gonna be wet, so it's gonna absorb into the bisque square. And as that happens, you might see some little speckles that start to show up. Um, that, that just means that it's being absorbed into the bisque square and we're gonna need a second coat. So once the first coat of our paint dries, we'll put a second coat on top. Once the second coat has dried, that should be able to cover the surface of our pinch pot. We're then going to go in with a contrasting color. So I prefer to start off with a dark color as my base coat and then use a lighter color on the top. Now in class, we have access to these specialty, um, they're specialty oil paints and they're called Rub and Buff and they come in a variety of metallic colors. You're going to be given an option of a few different um, Rub and Buff colors that you can use um, on your pinch pot. If you don't have rub and buff, let's say you're working on this at home, you could use a contrasting color of acrylic paint. And I'll show you both ways in this demonstration. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get my paint color. So I've chosen just a, a black acrylic paint to paint my pinch pot with for my base. Um, any dark color will work. If you choose a lighter or brighter color, then when you do your second layer of dry brushing, you'll wanna choose a lighter color. So I'm just going to put some of my paint here on my palette. And I don't need a whole lot. This will probably be more than enough and maybe I would share with someone else who wanted to use the same color. And then any sort of stiffer um, paintbrush works well with this. Now, if you're working at home, you're gonna wanna use whichever paintbrush you have available to you. And you do wanna make sure that you're using acrylic paint. Other types of paints won't stick as well to the surface of the pinch pot. Now, as I'm painting my pinch pot, I wanna consider some things because the paint is gonna be wet and this project is three-dimensional, which means that there's multiple ways that I need to hold this as I'm painting it. So I need to consider what's gonna be the best way for me to be able to paint all sides of this um, without having to waste too much time. So I'm gonna start off by painting the inside of my pinch pot, but I'm not gonna paint the rim yet. So I'm gonna paint the inside up to the rim. I'm then going to flip my pinch pot over so that it can sit on the rim without getting stuck to the paper. I'm then gonna paint the whole outside of my pinch pot up to where my feet are. I don't want to paint my foot, the foot on mine yet. So mine happened to be three little feet. Everyone's was a little bit different, but you need to be able to have a way to grab this and then flip it back over so that it can sit back on its foot. For right now, the foot, the entire foot of your project, we're going to leave that unpainted. After we're done, if you decide you want to go in and paint your foot, once you can leave it upside down for a little while, that would be fine. But in the past, I've seen where people have painted their rim and then they've set this down on a piece of scrap paper and it sticks to the paper and then they have paper stuck along their rim. So make sure that however you're storing this is on an unpainted surface. 
So as I'm painting, I'm gonna do two coats, but I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to sit here and watch me paint the whole thing and then wait for it to dry. So I'm gonna paint my first coat and then I will let it dry and then I'll come back in a little while and I'll paint my second coat and then I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the dry brush technique. When you're painting, just a couple of tips, you want to make sure you have enough paint and you want to really spread it around. So I'm starting in the inside at the bottom and I'm pulling that paint up and I'm going to occasionally add more paint to my brush to make sure that I'm covering the entire surface. So I keep adding paint, I keep loading up my brush. Again, remember the bisquare is really absorbing the paint. So it's gonna almost like gonna suck into the surface of the clay um, and it's gonna dry this first coat pretty quickly. So, you know, if you need more paint, you can come see your teacher for more paint. Um, it probably will take quite a bit to get your two coats. The second coat won't take quite as much paint as the first coat um, because some of that has already then absorbed into the bisquare, kind of um, making it less porous. Okay, so here you can see I have the whole inside painted, but I did not paint my rim. Now I'm gonna just carefully set this down and I have a piece of scrap paper here. So you do wanna make sure you're not just setting it on a table or something. Make sure you put some newspaper or a scrap piece of paper down um, or a piece of plastic, something um, down so that you're not getting paint all over your tables. Acrylic paint um, can stain. So please keep that in mind also. Try not to get it on yourself. So now I'm going to paint the outside of my pinch pot um, everywhere but the foot. When you get to the point where you're painting over your carved area, you really want to make sure that all of the paint is going down into the carved area. Sometimes you have to kind of dab the brush um, to get it into those, especially those smaller areas. And then just make sure that after you dab the paint in there, you then go back in and spread the paint out. You don't want really thick globs of paint because it's gonna take longer to dry and it's gonna dry unevenly. So you do wanna make sure you're spreading the paint around as you do this. So my first coat's done. I'm noticing like I have this little decorative rim that's sticking out around mine that I made with a coil. And while mine's sitting on its foot, um, I'm just gonna touch that, that edge up while I can see it. I'm being careful not to get the paint on the actual foot. And remember, we'll be able to touch up the bottom again later. So this is just our first coat. Um, and then once everything's dry, we'll be able to turn it over and paint the whole foot if you choose to or clean up any areas that um, are still messy looking. Um, if you're in class, you could also put this on a banding wheel with your scrap piece of paper underneath it so that you don't get paint on the banding wheel and that may help you to see your project from um, all angles. So at this point, mine needs to dry. I'll know when it's dry, when it's no longer as shiny and wet looking as it looks right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop for here, for now. I'm gonna clean my brush really well. This is another important part of acrylic painting is um, brushes can get ruined really easily um, if they're not cleaned out well. So when you go to the sink to clean out your brush, you wanna make sure you're using cool water Cool water will just help the brush stay together better than really hot water. You want to get all the brush, oh, I'm sorry, all the paint off of the brush and then add a little bit of soap to the brush and then you just kind of kind of paint the inside of your hand creating suds and then you're just going to make sure you run 
that um, brush under the water until no paint um, runs out of it. Once that happens, you can just take a piece of paper towel, dry paper towel, and just kind of blot the dry paper towel, and then turn your brush back into your teacher so that it can be cleaned a little bit better. And then if you got paint on your hands, you'll want to make sure that you wash your hands really well um, with soap and water. Your palette, if you have extra paint um, that can be like maybe put back into a container. So in class, um, we'll probably have paint that is in like a little plastic lidded container where we could then scoop, I could have scooped this back into the container. So I'm gonna take the lid off of my little paint here and see if I can't scoop this back in. So I wanna get as much of this back into the original paint as I can so I'm not wasting it. And then I also wanna make sure I clean my palette really well um, because if this acrylic paint um, dries on the palette or whatever surface I might have it on, then um, it'll stay there. If I were working at home and I didn't have a palette, I could just use a paper plate maybe or um, something made out of ceramic that could easily be cleaned, um, but you would wanna make sure that you clean it off. Um, even a piece of wax paper works really nicely um, as, a, as a makeshift palette. In class, um, we also have ceramic tiles that have been glazed that we use for palettes. Um, so the same thing would be um, for those. You just wanna make sure you clean them off really well, dry them, and then put them away. So I'm gonna clean up and then I'll let this dry and I'll come back in a little bit and I'll add my second coat and then I'll show you how to do the dry brushing. Okay, so at this point, my pinch pot has been drying um, probably for about a half hour, I would say. Um, you want to make sure that before you do your second coat, when you touch your project, um, no wet paint is coming off of it. If you don't wait for it to be completely dry, as you try to put the second coat of paint on, you're actually going to pull off the paint that hasn't dried yet. Um, creating bald spots on there um, and you're not actually adding a second coat. So this may actually take you a couple class periods to complete and while we're working on these we might be working on something else um, at the same time. So maybe you do one coat um, of paint one class period. If there's time you do the second coat or you wait until the next class period to do your second coat. Um, just depends on how much time you have to let it dry. So I'm going to go ahead and add my second coat in the same order that I did my first coat using the same color paint that I started with. And then one other thing about the second coat, the second coat will take longer to dry um, and you probably won't need quite as much paint for the second coat. Um, so really you just need to cover any areas that look like it didn't get covered in the first place. Um, so I'm just really doing a thin coat um, as opposed to a real thick coat. Okay, so I finished my second coat. I've kind of looked around, made sure I've gotten everywhere. I wanna make sure my second coat dries completely before I add my second color. So I would highly recommend that you let a day for this to dry, so like at least a class period. So if you're able to get two coats of your first layer, <clears throat> I'm sorry, of your first color down in one class period, Definitely let it dry until the next class period to do the rub and buff. Um, if you only get one coat of this done in one class period and you have to do a second coat in the second class period, we'll have to gauge it and see if you're able to do it early in the class period, there may be time to dry brush towards the end. Otherwise, you would just wait for one more class period for this to dry. So I'm gonna let mine dry completely, so that'll probably be overnight, um, and then I will come back and do the rub and buff um, 
on top of my texture so you can see how that works. But in the meantime, again, I don't wanna leave a mess, so I wanna make sure that I add my paint back into the bottle if I'm able to, and then make sure I clean everything up really well. When you store these, um, if you're in the classroom, we don't wanna wrap these with paper towel. We don't wanna put them in a plastic bag. Um, as of right now, the, the clay has been fired, so there's no need for paper towel and there's no need for um, plastic bags. And in fact, if you wrap that with paper towel or a plastic bag, all you're gonna do is get it stuck to the paint. So we want these to dry in our cabinet for in school. Just like this, keep your piece of scrap paper underneath so that way um, you don't get paint all over the shelves of the cabinet. If you're at home doing this, just make sure that you put your project in a, in a safe place for it to be able to dry um, in, a, in a place where you're not gonna get paint all over, um, where it can kind of sit and dry overnight. So I'll be back um, to show you rub and buff uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, so I've let my paint dry and it's been drying overnight. Um, and as you can see, I can pick this up and I can touch it. No paint is coming off on my hands. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky at all. Sometimes with the acrylic paint, it can look like it's dry, but it's not really completely dry if it feels sticky. So you do want to, again, make sure that you wait for this to be completely dry before attempting to do the dry brushing on top. So for in class, um, we have some specialty paint called Rub and Buff, and this comes in a variety of metallic colors. It's an oil-based paint, um, and we're gonna be able to use this um, to create a dry brush technique on the surface of our pinch pot. Um, if I were at home and I didn't have Rub and Buff, um, I could use a contrasting acrylic paint color. So I do actually have a copper paint that I'm gonna test out um, to also demonstrate with. <clears throat> but if you didn't have the shiny color, even something like white, excuse me, even like a white paint um, so that would be contrasting this darker color would be nice. Um, it doesn't have to be white, it could be any other color that you choose. So um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm working on a piece of scrap paper or something underneath my work surface. And I'm going to put just a little bit of rub and buff on my paper. Now, um, this one hasn't been opened, so I'm gonna open it, but um, a little bit of this goes a really long way. And we really only wanna use it to accent the texture of our pinch pot. And I'm gonna show you how to apply this and make sure you watch carefully because um, if you don't put it on correctly, it's, got, it's not gonna look quite right. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of this, it's called Spanish Copper um, on my piece of paper. And then I'm gonna use more of a stiff haired brush. This brush would maybe be for stenciling, um, but it's got some stiffer bristles on it, and this is better a better type of brush for dry brush painting than something that's really soft and floppy. Now, I have a lot, or not a lot of paint, but a little bit of paint here, but I don't wanna use all of it at once. I'm gonna just take a little tiny amount of the Rub and Buff on my brush, and then I'm gonna actually buff it out on the paper before I put it onto my pinch pot because a lot of it's gonna come off at once and we just wanna kind of dust it on in layers to accentuate our texture. So off to the side, I'm just gonna get most of it off and just kind of rub. What this is doing is kind of working the paint into the bristles. If we didn't do this, that big splotch that you see there on the paper, that would be put right onto my pinch pot. Now, this color is actually a little bit darker than I thought it was gonna be, so I hope we're gonna be able to tell here, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. When we apply the paint, you're just gonna kind of lightly brush it over the surface of your pinch pot. Now. You're not gonna see some, it's not gonna happen right away, okay? But hopefully you can kind of see in the lighted angles, it's starting to slowly build up 
a layer of color, okay? So I'm just kind of brushing back and forth, going in different directions. And I'm gonna do this over the whole surface of my pinch pot. And actually, I'm not sure how well you can see this, so I'm gonna choose a different color. Um, I have some other color choices here. Um, so I think I'm gonna switch to this European gold color. I think it's gonna turn out better. I think you'll be able to see it better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this European gold color and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the Spanish copper. Um, off to the side here, I'm just gonna kind of buff that into the paper, get the gold to be worked into my brush now. And then as I'm doing this, again, I'm kind of lightly brushing back and forth there, this is looking better, I can tell already. And I know the lighting's kind of weird, but let me get a little bit more on here. So because I've buffed that into the paper, it's not gonna go on super dark, okay? And that's what we want. We almost want this to look aged. I want the gold color to sit on the top surface so that it's accentuating my texture. So hopefully you can see now as I'm adding this gold on top, the texture, my carved part of my pinch pot is starting to show up more because the gold is resting on the raised areas of my carved design. And in the inset or recessed areas where I carved into, we're gonna keep that free from the rub and buff. Okay. If you get a little bit on there, it's all right, but try to work it around it and just on the higher surfaces um, of your pinch pot. Okay, so I would do this all the way around. I would go, you know, along the rim of my pinch pot and I would also do the inside. Okay, um, but I'm going to take a minute. I want to also show you that you could do this with acrylic paint as well. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to control. Um, but let me get set up with that and I'll be right back to show you how to, how to use um, the acrylic paint instead. Okay, so I have another stiff handled or stiff bristled brush here that I'm gonna use with the, my acrylic paint. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just take a little bit of the acrylic paint and put it onto a piece of paper. And take your brush and put a little bit of paint on the brush and do the same thing. Work the paint into the bristles. Um, the one thing about the acrylic paint, it's not going to dry as quickly. Um, it might be a little bit more watery than um, the rub and buff. So you may need to load the brush up a couple of times and work um, the paint into those bristles. But then I'm gonna do this on the inside, hopefully so that you can see, we'll, we'll try it. And I'm just gonna kind of lightly um, paint and pull. Again, I'm, I'm just letting the paint kind of sit along the raised surface. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me just do this back here. Um, I started to carve my name in mine here, so hopefully this will work if I show you this way. So again, I'm just kind of lightly brushing my paint over the surface of my pinch pot so that it's hitting like the raised areas. But you still want to see some of the darker colors shining through. Okay. Now, after I do this all over, okay, and I do my rim and I do the inside. Um, and if you don't want to do the inside, actually, you could leave the inside on without the rub and buff and just do the outside. But you should go all the way around. Once that rub and buff is dry, if you decide you want to go back and paint the bottom part of your pinch pot, that would be the time to do that. So the rub and buff dries pretty quickly as long as you don't put it on really thick. Um, and I feel a lighter coating looks nicer and you can just kind of gradually layer up more as you want it, but it shouldn't end up super shiny. It should end up kind of antiqued looking. 
Um, but you could then go back and, and paint the bottom. Um, but just make sure that when you put it away to dry, if you paint the bottom, that you let it sit, let your pinch pot sit on its rim so that way it doesn't stick um, to the paper or get paint all over your cabinet. And that's it. The, this pinch pot will be done and your other pinch pot will be using um, to learn how to glaze. So thank you guys.